wanted to do an album with the sounds of the 50s, the sounds of the 60s, of the 70s, and then um, a sound of the future. I know the synthesizers. Why don't I use the synthesizer, which is the sound of the future? And I didn't have any idea what to do, but I knew I needed a click. So we put a click on the 24 track, which then... Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so be before we get started, uh, I just actually, you know what? I just want you guys to kind of get a sense of why I flew all the way to Munich. Um, no, 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 no. This is correct. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you guys a sense. When uh, Steffi asked me about coming to Munich, I said, well, you know what? It's the top of the year. I got a ton of stuff to do. And then she said, oh, but, you know, I want you to interview Giorgio Moroder. And I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> That's exactly what they asked me. And they said, could you come to Munich? No, I lived here, so I know Munich very well. But, so they said, but you know who's there? Troy. <laughs> I said, where Troy is, I have to be. <laughs> so, you know, I want to go back to that, to that video and just kind of give you guys a sense of Giorgio's bi uh, body of work. So uh, let's, let's go to the video. I wanted to do an album with the sounds of the 50s, the sounds of the 60s, of the 70s, and then have a sound of the future. And I said, wait a second, I know the synthesizer. Why don't I use the synthesizer, which is the sound of the future? And I didn't have any idea what to do, but I knew I needed a click. So we put a click on the 24 track, which then was synced to the Moog modular. I knew that could be a sound of the future, but I didn't realize how much the impact would be. Giorgio Moroda for Midnight Express. Giorgio Moroda keeps forcing Iron Car for flash dance. What a feeling!
so, so, wow. <laughs> hit after hit after hit. Some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so for me, you know, you kind of embody the theme of DLD this year. It's only the beginning. So, you know, at 74, to have this resurgence of career and, um, you know, it's, we, we were talking in the back about 74 being the new 24. Right. And, um, and, kind of. <laughs> but, what, you know, I just want to know, you know, the, one of the things I love about the music industry, and that's kind of different from technology and everything else, is, you know, what you stepping in with a, a brand new project at 74, uh, a friend of ours, Doug Morris, just started, you know, a couple years ago at 72, his new job at Sony Records. Mm -hmm, Jimmy mm -hmm. Iovine at 56 started Beats by Dre. Um, what keeps you going and what, what keeps you inspired? Well, actually, I had a beautiful life before the Daft Punk got me back in the business. I would do <laughs> the stuff I liked, play a little golf, do a little... But then uh, I got the chance to work with them on, on the song, which then uh, actually we got the, the Grammy. And I started to, first of all, to DJ, which I love. I just did some DJs with 30,000 people, which is incredible. You see all these people and you do this and everybody's jumping and dancing. So it's phenomenal. And then uh, Sony Records offered me a deal to do an album and uh, it's almost done. I have some incredible singers who help me out. One would be Sia, who has a big hit right now, uh, Britney Spears, uh, uh, Kylie Minogue, and the song is coming out tomorrow. It's called Right Here, uh, Right Now. I have uh, some very young guys, uh, girls like, like uh, Madeleine, uh, Madeleine, I have uh, Foxes, uh, I have a very, very great new singer called Charlie XCX. Wow. So I have, I have some, let's say, big names like, like Britney Spears, but some relatively unknown like Foxes or let's say uh, another uh, 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 great guy, two great guys. Uh, one is Echo, uh, Mick, Iki, Mickey Echo, and uh, uh, the girl, um, what's her name? I forgot. And I have so many great ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and the album is coming out soon, and uh, I'm, I'm doing a little promotion right now, and I'm happy to be here. And you know, this is great because it's, it's digital, and uh, you ask me, what's my connection with digital? So, <clears throat> first of all, uh, I love digital, and I think I was one of the first, if not the first one, to record a whole album on digital. And that was, the album was called EMC Square, which uh, I recorded in Los Angeles uh, with a, the, 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 the inventor of d digital, at least the music digital machine, was a guy from, uh, from uh, Salt Lake City called uh, Dr. Stockham, mm -hmm. who invented basically the stereo digital. Wow. So I, I, I recorded the whole, so the whole album in, uh, I think, in two days live. And I remember to do edits and cuts. I had to wait for like weeks for his computer to generate uh, the edits and all. Uh, the, the second uh, uh, thing which I did in digital was when I, I, I recorded and, and uh, composed the music for, for the silent movie Metropolis, I recorded it on 24-track digital Sony, again Sony, and the mixes I did in stereo with the surrounds, four tracks. So I was the first ever to play a movie at the Academy in Los Angeles by playing the four tracks directly from a, um, stereo, from, a, from a digital machine. So we had to carry these big machines up in the projection room, wow. two machines, and praying that they stay sync with the, with the the movie and it went very that, well. Because I, I think people have this idea that um, technology is the, in, is the enemy of the music industry 
And um, you know, one of the things I wanted, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you with kids making music on computers now, and um, you know, a lot of people think it's gonna have an adverse effect on kids learning how to play instruments. Do you think that the computer uh, will have that effect, or you, do you think the computer is an actual instrument? I think the way to record right now is great. Because it, it, it's kind of a d democracy, because you don't have to spend $5,000 like I used to spend to do a track. You needed the musicians, you needed the studio, you cannot afford a studio with a big console. Right now, with a, with a, with a home recording of, uh, let's say, two dollars $3,000, first of all, if you're talented, if you, are, if you have the drive, you can do recordings perfect, perfect sounds. And then with the help of, uh, of the digital world, the, 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 the media, you can, launch, uh, you can launch a song. You don't have to go to a record company. You can launch it in the internet. Uh, if you know the ways how to use uh, all the different, uh, the, the, all the different programs, you have, a, you have a good chance of having a song at least heard out in the, in the world. And, and how, how do you stay inspired? What do you, what do you currently listen to? Well, right now, since I'm, since I'm writing and producing this song, uh, this album, I have to listen what, what's out there. So every two, three days, I, I go in the internet, I look at the video, I go charts the f number one, 200 in, in, in America. I listen to the German charts, I listen to the English charts, I go down, I listen to Sweden, and I listen wow. to Australia. Wow. So basically, I almost know the top 100 what's out now, wow. and I love them wow. most. So take, take us back, you know, I know you have a, a rich history in Munich, and um, it, it seems as if, you know, like on the, the, the Best Of video, it was a lot of Donna Summer in there. It seems like you, you two were almost like musical soulmates. Um, how, how did you discover her, and what, what was the, your, you, your process in creating with Donna? Well, one, uh, one day, Pete Bellotti, my co-producer, we needed some great singers, not possibly Germans, but English or American without an accent. Mm -hmm. And Donna was uh, here in town, she was married to a guy, and she, wa she didn't work because she, she was working on, on the musical hair, which then closed, so she was here. <laughs> We used her for, uh, to do a demo, and uh, one day we said, if we have a great song, we take you as a singer. So we had one or two smaller hits, and then one day I had the idea of doing a sexy song. And that was the song Love to Love Your Baby, uh, which people claim that about a million kids were born <laughs> in the next <laughs> days. <laughs> And those millions were not mine. Hold on, I, what, year, uh, what year was that? I was born in 1972. You maybe <laughs> were. <laughs> no, you were born a little too early. Okay. <laughs> so then uh, we had a three-minute version, and, uh, and uh, it came out, and one day the president of, of uh, uh, in, uh, what's the one, the record, the, the record company, Neil Bogart, uh, called me and asked if I could do a long version. So that was the first extended version of a song, and it became a 17 minutes version of the song. And she moaned, uh, according to the New York Times, she, I think she moaned 78 <laughs> times. So time enough for the, the audience to get into the right uh, mood. Nice. <laughs> No, and, and that record still plays today like, like it was made, you know, a week ago. You know, and that's what's great about your music. It seems to be uh, completely timeless. Yeah, Donna Summer was a great, uh, great artist, very talented. Uh, uh, we did a second uh, kind of a, a, a song which, which was a little bit of a... Of a, 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 a David, David Bowie and, and Eno said, it's the sound of the future, which was the song I feel love. And uh, that was the first song, at least in the dance world, where all the instruments are synthesizers. So I had this huge machine here in town in, in, in uh, Munich. Uh, I had my technician and uh, I started doing 
I actually, I didn't know what to do, but I said, okay, I'll put down a baseline. So I, t I told the guy, Robbie, give me, give me a C. So he got all his, his cables and it, it, it was like, like the old phone uh, center, you know, yeah, where they, yeah. like, so he gave me a note, dong, 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 totally out of tune. Okay, now give me a second, dong, 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 dong. Dun, 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 dun. So then, like you heard on that uh, track with uh, with Daft Punk, uh -huh. I put down the click, tick tick tick, a machine, and that click triggered this humongous, beautiful, great uh, uh, Moog uh, modular. So it plays played, dong 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 dong, or a little faster, the way I wanted. So I would play. 20 seconds, and, the, and it was out of tune, so 20 seconds, then again, and then, and then I, I asked him, okay, give me, give me the sound of a snare. So he was again there for half an hour, and, and then, okay, now give me... A half hour on one snare. At least, yeah, wow. because you have a white noise, you know, and you have to filter it, and uh, so he gave me the hi-hat, the, the, whatever I needed, and uh, then Donna sang it, and uh, it's, uh, it came out. The, the great thing, and I, I, didn't, I didn't even notice, but the great thing with that song is that it's so electronic, so uh, m machine, but then with, the, with the, that beautiful voice of Donna on top gave it that little romantic thing. It's beautiful. And then uh, going into an, an, another stage of your career, you know, what we saw was uh, one of my favorite movies of all time was uh, Scarface. But what was interesting with Scarface is that, you know, Al Pacino played this, you know, incredible character, but it was almost as if the, if the music to the movie was a character itself. Like the music had taken on a personality. And I think that was my first time and a lot of people's first time just hearing that sort of uh, sonic companionship in, in a movie. Yeah. Uh, can, can you tell us about the, the process with Composing that, and specifically with Scarface. That, that was, uh, let's, n no movie is easy, but that was relatively easy because while uh, Brian De Palma was filming, I had my first idea of the sound, and the sound was dum, 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 and he liked it. Uh -huh. So that's like, okay. Hold on, do that, the, do the, that the, again, <laughs> do that again. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> well, it's a sec some chords we do. Dum, 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 dum. Anyway, so I was saved. That was those. He that, liked the idea. That's considered like a download from God. It's like, <laughs> yeah, with what my... that turns into. <laughs> and um, the interesting thing with that movie was that uh, when we played it, when Brian played it to the to the first time to the uh, audience, made of audience critics, um, crew, it was a disaster. People booed, so we said, oh, okay, we worked for so long and now it's... So the movie didn't do well, but then they released it on video and it became a huge hit. It's, it's one of those cult movies which... Uh, uh, four or five cult movies were, and especially American... Uh, African American. Yeah, that's love what I was it. gonna say. In our neighborhood, it's like everybody wanted to be Scarface, but you don't realize he dies at the end. So yeah. it's like, but everybody wanted to be Scarface. Yeah, there are some some people who know the dialogue from beginning to the end. Yeah, like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I was telling, I forgot who a, 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 a very prominent guy. I said, you know, I love the movie. I, I just saw it again. It's three and a half minutes. Three, three minutes, 20. So I said, you know what, I love it, but I would take one minute out here, I would take a minute here out, you know, shorten it a little bit. The guy said, I would kill you. <laughs> I wouldn't let you take one second out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, he loved it. So uh, what does what, what the next 20 years look like for you? Well, in 20 years, I think I should be or up there, <laughs> 74, 84, 90. No, no, I'm still here. 94. Still, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I finish. I finish this album in about two months. Uh, I'm going on. Uh, I became a DJ, so I love it. So I'm doing DJing, um, 
And I guess uh, after this album, maybe I'll do a second one. Nice. And maybe finding, finding some new acts. I just got an offer from, from uh, two, um, two Swedish guys, really good guys. I do the music for a, uh, a game, a video game, which I, I never play, but uh, for, for Disney, called for the Tron. Oh, yeah. Which is quite interesting, and uh, I got some offers to do movies. So, you know, I think I'm back into working, more or less, or more than less. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we have a few, uh, I got one more question, then we can uh, throw it out to the audience. Uh, what's that one album, if you could take one album on a desert island, what, what would it be? Um... Do you know, one, one album which I, I listen over and over and over is Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh -huh. When they, they had this, this the, 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 the um, Prokofiev, the, the picture of an exhibition, uh -huh. that album was fantastic. The other one which I love is uh, uh, the, the uh, God, what the four singers I produced one. I'm getting older, so I forgot that. <laughs> but generally speaking, uh, Pink, Floyd, Pink I love, Floyd, I love most of them. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Uh, do you, we have any questions in the audience for, for Giorgio? Mm -hmm. First question's always okay. the toughest one. No, well, well, well oh. yeah. Why did, you, why did you leave Munich? Um, do you know what? I, I, I was drinking so much beer and eating so much uh, uh, Weisswurst, uh, I said, I have to leave. No, <laughs> no I, I had the, the, my first big hit was Love to Love You Baby with Donna Summer. And the first thing she wanted to do, she wanted to go home. So she left, went to Los Angeles, and I said, I, it's my bread and butter, I cannot leave her alone, so I, I left. That's, but I'm, I used to come here at least three, four times a year. Now a little less, but I, I love it. I still love it here. But the, the only reason was Donna Summer. Right. Okay. I'm wondering what was the main thing that brought you out of retirement? It's a crazy echo. And if you think you're going to retire again, or you just want to work forever? Uh, I, well, first of all, the DJ, I, I don't think I can do it forever because it's, you know, between, between the, fly, the flying around the jet lag and all, it's, it's really difficult. Uh, music, I think I'm going to continue as long as, the, as, as, long as somebody wants me, right? I, I probably start with a, one of those big movies, hopefully soon. So uh, movies is great, uh, I may do a second album, so I'm, I think I'm going to be in this business as long as people want me. Well, on that note, uh, I want to thank you for coming, Giorgio, and it's uh, been, been a pleasure. Great interview, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay. Probably the biggest star right now in the world. <laughs> well, thank you. The Lady Gaga, that's him. It's all his fault. It's all her fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's all your fault. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, get, uh, come in the middle. You come in the middle. Okay. And who will come? Who will come? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And Lindsay Carter. You have the same age? <laughs> no, you're much older than me. <laughs> I'm 85. But you know what? I sang a song for you. Um, the classical composer, your friend uh, um, Eberhard Schöner, yeah. came to Los Angeles uh, probably 10 years ago mm -hmm. and said, uh, Hubert is having his birthday, I probably 70, 60, 64. Yeah. And he said, couldn't you record a song, Happy Birthday? And I did it, all my voice, and this was for you. You may have heard it, but 
you, have, you probably had so many songs. <laughs> I have birthday in two weeks. So let's oh, sing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we sing now? Yes, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hubert. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so I just uh, just want to contribute about getting older because we both probably are born in the same year, something like this. Um, how do you feel getting older? It's not great. <laughs> really? No, no, I'm okay. No, 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 no. no. I, now, I, I want to come to the point which I think brings both of us together. It's creativity. If you, if you stand up in the morning and you have something to do, and you have a sense for something to finish, it's a magazine, it's a campaign, it's a poem, it's a book, yeah. it's a movie, and, and this, keeps, this will keep you young. You all will be... 74, one day. Well, actually, <laughs> my, my latest song, it's called 74, no, 24, no, what is it? 74 <laughs> is the new, 74 is the new 24. <laughs> because we're like 24, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> Between no, us. We have, to, we have to shape for this next generation the feeling that it's wonderful to get older as long as you, as you are creative. Why you must be creative? Because your brain gets young. You have two sides of the brain, the left and the right, and they must always communicate with each other. And that's why we stay in business. Yeah, and I, I do a lot of crossword puzzles in English, in German, and in Italian. So that's, that's for my left ear. And for the right, I do music. And it's great, I love to do it. Uh, a story I never told. One minute and then it's finished. My father couldn't sleep uh, and he worked very hard. He built up the company. I have a lot of, of uh, advantages. He couldn't sleep. And he told me, I only can sleep when I do a crossword. And so he started with crosswords and left side of the brain. And for the right side of the brain, he need good stories out of Paris March and Live magazine. And he created a magazine called Freizeit Revue, oh, which wow. is one of the best seller and who is copied 28 times in Germany. It's, it's a circulation of more than 30 million copies a week. Not ours, wow. but the copies too. And this was the invention of my father because I hear it for the first time that you do Gazzetta Enigmatica. Gena. Gazzetta <laughs> yeah. Enigmatica. Settima, settimana. Setti, yes. Settimana Enigmistica. So now you, you know how. Uh, Haben Sie gehört, wie Mädchen entstehen im Schlaf? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>